Real blessing in your life. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. This is a year of your joy. A year of achievement. A year of ascending higher. A year of achievement. It will be done in Jesus' name. But don't you forget, don't you forget what we just ministered now. Keep on believing and confessing what Jesus said. And whatsoever you say shall be yours in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name. We glorify you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, how you are blessing your people. And we pray, Lord, this year it will be abundance of blessings in Jesus' name. That your glory will show in every life. And your power will be manifest every life, every family, every minister, every member of this church in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, for everyone involved in this service. We pray for our leaders. We pray for our full-time workers and all our regular workers, our youths, our children, our mothers and fathers, our campus people everywhere. We are asking, oh Lord, your blessing will multiply this year. Abundance this year, oh Lord. Prosperity promotion this year. Holiness, righteousness this year. And we pray there will be no moment of defeat, of downfall in anyone. Confirm it, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Speak your word to everyone right now. And let your blessing be uh, visible in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 5. Exodus 19, verse 5. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me, above all the people, all people, for all the earth is mine. Here the Lord is saying, if we look at the condition of the word of God, and if ye will indeed obey my voice, it says, you'll be a peculiar treasure above all the people of the earth. The first part of verse 8, and all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. We will do. Everybody say that we will do. And as you do that, the blessings of the Lord will be in your life this year more than ever before in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verses 1 and 2. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verses 1 and 2. Ye are the children of the Lord your God. Any amen there? Yeah. We are the children of God. By, by the new birth, we're born again. We believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. All our sins were forgiven. And then he gives us his righteousness. And because of this, we are assured by faith, by the grace of God, we are the children of God. Look at verse 2. For thou art an holy people, thou art an holy people unto the other God. And the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people, peculiar people unto himself, above all the nations that are upon the earth. Because of our faith now in the Lord Jesus Christ, because of the new birth, because of the change, because of the transformation, and because we keep on trusting, keep on believing, keep on manifesting, retaining confidence in the Lord, it says we have become the peculiar people of the Lord. You'll never come down from that position in Jesus' name. Chapter 26, Deuteronomy chapter 26, I read from verse 17. Thou hast avouched the Lord this day to be thy God and to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments to hearken unto his voice. Verse 18 And the Lord has avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people. The Lord has avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people as he has promised thee and that thou shouldest keep all his commandments and to make thee high above all nations which he has made in praise and name and in honor and that thou mayest be an holy people unto the Lord thy God as he has spoken all over the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament the Lord is saying that this year you are a peculiar treasure unto him we are the peculiar people of God. And the blessings of peculiar people will come upon our lives. 
in first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 verse 9 but she a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people you see that from the old testament is reminding us the kind of people we are we are not the ordinary people we're the peculiar people we're the children of god because of being washed in the blood of the lamb and because we're saved because our sins are forgiven and we have the righteousness of christ in us by grace as a gift it says we're peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light titus chapter 2 peculiar people titus chapter 2 reading from verse 14 titus chapter 2 verse 14 who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself tell me a peculiar people see all over he doesn't want us to think like the people of the world act like the people of the world and equate ourselves with the people of the world and accept whatever is happening to those ordinary people of the world they will be happy to say what do you expect that's the country we're living in what do you expect that's the community we're living in what do you expect it's happening to other people i cannot make myself an exception other people are down i have to be down with them no i'm not going to be down with them I said I will not be done with them. All the people are defeated. And what can I expect? I'll be defeated with them. I will not be defeated with them. Everybody is sorrowful. Everybody is going through one thing or the other. And what do you expect? Disaster is everywhere. And since it's everywhere, everybody is getting it. I'm catching it too. I will not catch it. I said I will not catch it. They are ordinary. You are extraordinary. And they are, you know, just the, you know, deacon, hybrid deacon, Harry, but you are peculiar, and you're pe peculiar in Jesus' name. You know, some people, they don't understand how unique we are, how special we are, how peculiar we are, how, spe how, how lifted up, we are, how exalted we are. And if you challenge them, ah, brother, hi, about this, this a new year, let something come and new in your life, in your family. Oh, you say, be patient with me. You know, it's just like, look at so and so, look at such and such. I am just like, what have I done that is more than what they have done? I think, uh, you know, he doesn't know his position. You know your position. I said, you know your position. You are peculiar in Jesus' name. He says to purify unto himself a peculiar people, peculiar people, zealous of good works. That's me. I said, that's me. This year you are going to find unique power, unique authority, unique anointing, and unique victory because we're peculiar in Jesus' name. But what's God going to do for his peculiar people? I'm looking at um, Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. God's peculiar people, their heritage, their inheritance, and the promise of the Lord for them. Isaiah chapter 42. We're reading from verse 6. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 6. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand. And will keep thee and give thee for a covenant on and of the people for a light unto the Gentiles to open the, uh, the blind eyes and to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Now verse 9, behold, behold, you'll, you'll get this one. The former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. And new things do I declare. This year, every month will be new to you. Every week will be new to you. And when you get to your place of work, new, new things will happen in Jesus' name. And as you minister in the church, and as you fellowship in the church, worship in the church, new things every time in Jesus' name. It says, new things, do I declare? Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Chapter 43, chapter 43 of Isaiah. Isaiah 43, I'm reading from verse 7. 
for even everyone that is called by my name. Everyone that is called by my name. I know I am called by the name of the Lord. I said I am called by the name of the Lord. The blood of Jesus claims me. I'm called by the name of the Lord. And his redemption atonement has worked for me. I'm born again. I'm called by the name of the Lord. How about you? And it says, everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. This year, you are for glory. Amen. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Verse 21, it says, these people have I formed for myself. You are for the Lord. Amen. You are not for Satan. You are not for civil society. You are not for evil powers. You are not for the occultic people to, uh, to oppress. These people have I fought for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Now, verse 18. This is mine. I said, this is mine. In verse 18, remember ye not the former things. The tears of the past, let's forget. The sorrows of the past, let's forget. All those heartaches of the past, let us forget. All the failure, the defeat of the past, let us forget. All the weakness of the past, let us forget. They are forgotten in Jesus' name. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, 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 I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. We're looking at the message today, renewed promises for God's peculiar people. Renewed promises for God's peculiar people. Three things we're going to consider before we pray. Number one, the new identity of new creatures. The new identity of new creatures. we we'll become new creatures in Christ and we have a new identity. We have a new name, we have a new nature, we have a new spirit, we have a new heart, and then we have a new outlook as well. It's a new identity of the new creature. This year, as you look at yourself, don't look at yourself with the old understanding, the old nature, old tradition, old habits, and old way of life. There is a new identity for everyone, and we're going to see it manifest in every life in Jesus' name. Number two is the new inheritance in the new covenant. The new inheritance in the new covenant. New inheritance. God gives us a new covenant. And because of that new covenant, he's put a lot of possession there, a lot of portions there, a lot of new, new things, inheritance, heritage that he has given us. New inheritance in the new covenant. Number three, the new instruction for new conquerors. The new instruction for new conquerors. The new instruction for new conquerors. Number one, the new identity of new creatures. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Here it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if any man be in Christ. How do we come into Christ? Very simple. But when we were in our sins, before we knew Jesus as Lord and Savior, we were outside Christ. Outside the commonwealth of Israel. Outside the grace of God. Outside the real life of Christ. And then we saw Christ far away. And we saw ourselves in our sins. And the Lord beckoned unto us, said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And we trusted in that promise. I will, I will, I will give you rest. And I said, That's what I've been looking for. My soul needs rest. My spirit needs rest. And then we came to Christ, leaving all our sins behind. We repented of our sins. They tried to follow us and said, Get thee behind me, all my infirmity and all my iniquity, all my transgression and then we held on to Christ by faith and then he got us in. If any man be in Christ by faith, we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and then the spirit of God whispered within us thou art my child I have forgiven you, I have taken your sins away. Now we are in Christ and Christ is in us. Now we are in Christ and his word is in us. We are in Christ and his uh, spirit is in us. That's what he says here. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. 
Old things are passed away. Old guilt gone. Old condemnation gone. Old weakness gone. And it says, Behold, how many things have become new? All things have become new. All things have become new. He makes us new creatures. Let's look at Galatians chapter, uh, chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6 telling us what's important now. Our important consideration is the fact that we're new creatures in Christ. New creatures in Christ. You're not carrying about again the guilt of the old life, the condemnation of the old life, the pressures of the old life, the weaknesses of the old life. The Lord has taken all that away. There is no condemnation now for them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but they walk after the Spirit. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 15, for in Christ Jesus Neither circumcision availeth anything, nor all circumcision. What that is saying is, you see, the old religious world, they looked at uh, the world in you know, order two perspectives the Jewish people circumcised, and then the Gentiles uncircumcised. And now the Lord is saying, by this inspired word, a Jew or Gentile, that doesn't matter anymore. You are from the south, from the north, that doesn't matter anymore. You are coming from the west, you are coming from the east, that doesn't matter anymore. You are of this tribe, you are of that tribe, that does not matter anymore. You are a man, you are a woman. There's no pride anymore and there's no competition anymore because it says it is neither the circumcised nor the uncircumcised, but a new creature. But a new creature. The thing that matters now is the very fact that the blood of Jesus has done the work both for the Jew and the Gentile, for the man and for the woman, for the young and for the old. And what matters now is being a new creature. What's then the identity of the new creature? Your identity, my identity. In First John chapter 3, First John chapter 3, my new name, your new name, the new identity that we're now carrying in uh, First John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. That's our new identity. No more slave of Satan, sons of God. No more ordinary men of society. We're now the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, beloved, now are we the sons of God? When are we going to be the sons of God? I said, when are we the sons of God? Now. Some people say you cannot be sure, you can never be sure until you cross over. Jordan, what they call spiritual Jordan, and then you cross to the other, other side, and then the Lord Jesus Christ accepts you, and he says you are a child of God, only then can you be sure. But the beloved apostle, he said, beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in himself, in him, purifies himself, even as he is pure. Our identity, we are now the sons of God. I'm a child of God. The Spirit of God will bear witness in your heart. You are now a child of God. Everywhere you go, you walk and you stand and you act like a real child of God. Not a child of Satan because you are not a child of Satan anymore. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, first were sons. That's a new identity. In Ephesians chapter 2, reading there from verse 19. Our identity now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners. Ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. He now says we are saints. We are fellow citizens with the saints. You know what the religious world has done? The religious world will be waiting and waiting and waiting until somebody dies. After he is dead and is gone. Then they will uh, call the people and say alive together. They'll have a ceremony. They'll say, now they want to canonize so and so. And we now refer to him as a saint. They have dead saints, but God has living saints. I say God has living saints. While we're still alive, 
while we're here and the blood of Jesus cleanses us they don't know the cleansing in the blood of Jesus and you know if, if you went if you go to somewhere if I want to shock anybody this new year and then he says um, you know he says he shake my hand and then I shook his hand and he said I am uh, you know Mr. So and so oh I say oh wonderful and I say I'm Saint William he'll be shocked he'll, he'll go back like this he said Saint what I said I'm Saint William I said, who are you? Tell me now. St. William, he'll be shocked because he doesn't understand. And now tell me about yourself, who are you? I said, who are you? You know, your, your husband will be shocked if you got back home and, you know, he said, and your husband says, darling, and say, well, well, yes, I understand, darling, but you know, today I have a new identity. I said, I have a new identity. I'm St. Josephine. I'm Saint Mary. Your husband will say, Oh, what happened? What happened? What happened? I just told you my new name now. What's your new name? Yeah. You are Saint in Jesus' name. Yeah. You see, that's the identity of a real child of God. And that's what he says over here that we are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. In verse 20, he says, And we're built built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets jesus christ himself being the chief cornerstone and let's come to first corinthians first corinthians the identity of a new creature of a real child of god in um, first corinthians chapter 6 first corinthians chapter 6 i'm reading from verses 19 and 20 verses 19 and 20 watch Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. He tells us we are the temple of the Holy Ghost, the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh, you think about your own house, your own house where you live. If, uh, you know, you are coming in like this, and then you find somebody, a uh, kind of riffraff, a kind of, uh, a kind of vagabond somewhere, and then he's breaking your window, breaking your window. Will you just stand there and fold your hand and say, well done, when you're finished, let me know. Will you say that? If Satan comes and he's knocking at your body, knocking your head, knocking your bones, and you know, tearing your flesh, and he's putting cancer here, putting tuberculosis there, will the Holy Ghost, and you are the temple of the Holy Ghost, will the Holy Ghost say, well done, Satan, when you're finished, let me know, I gather a remnant? Will the Holy Ghost say that? This year, understand anything that comes is not coming from God, it's coming from Satan, it's coming from demons. You say this cannot happen, this cannot happen. Holy Ghost, wake up and send them away, will send them away in your life in Jesus' name. He says, Don't you know, don't you know your new identity? You are the temple of the Holy Ghost, which ye have in you, and ye are not shown, for ye are bought with a price. I said you are bought with a price. I said you are bought with a price. You are a purchased property. Let's say, for example, you take all your income, all the money you have ever gathered together, you put everything together, and you buy a piece of property. And you don't have any other money, any, any other place. This is everything you've got. And you bought this, this uh, purchased property. That means that thing is very important to you. You are watching over that thing. You are taking care of that thing. If anything comes to make it dirty or to dent it or whatever, this cannot happen. Because all your income, everything you ever got, you spent in buying that thing. And the blood of Jesus without retaining any other drug. He spent everything upon you and you have purchased property. Anything that comes to get around to defile you, to dent your life, to destroy your life, or to make you sick, the Lord Jesus will rise up immediately. I'll say this cannot happen. That's a purchased property, untouchable property. You're untouchable in Jesus' name. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Because now you have a new identity. Matthew, Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. I'm reading here from verse 14. Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 14. It says, Ye are the light of the world. Give me a good amen. amen. Ye are the light, the light, the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You will not be hidden anymore in Jesus' name. Neither do men light a candle and put it upon and put it under a bushel, 
but a pour on a candlestick and it giveth light to all that are in the house this uh, this year you'll give light to everybody around let your light so shine before men that they may behold your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven what's our new identity we're sons of god what's our new identity we're saints of god what's our new identity we're temples of the living god what's our new identity we're the light in the world light in the world and then we're looking at john chapter 15 john chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 1 john chapter 15 we're reading from verse 1 in john chapter 15 verse 1 it says i am the true vine and my father is the husband man every branch in me that's what we are now we're branch in him and the same uh, virtue inside the real trunk is also inside the branch the branch may be lean the branch may be long the branch may be big the branch may be short but the same attribute that you find in the tree itself you find in the branch that's why i say there's love in christ there's love in you there's unity in father son and holy ghost the unity in our midst in jesus name there is a peace in Christ. There is peace in you in Jesus' name. There's joy in Christ. The fruit of the Spirit are in Christ. And they're also in you because you are a branch in Him. Look at verse, look at verse 4. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in Him. Because you are a branch in Christ and you are an abiding branch, this year you are going to bear fruit. The work of your hand will bear fruit. In your family, you will bear fruit. In the ministry, you will bear fruit in Jesus' name. I am the vine in verse 5. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same, the same, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Much fruit this year. I said much fruit this year. For without me, ye can do nothing. Verse 7, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. This year, God will answer your prayers. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, and ye shall be, tell me, tell me there, my disciples, your new identity, you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. You're not a disciple of Moses. You're a disciple of Jesus Christ. You're not a disciple of a tradition. You're a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And because you're a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, what he says, you will say. Where he goes, you will go. What he does, you will do. And the way the Father answered and listened to the Son, that's the way the Lord will listen to you. Then in Second Peter, your identity, new identity, new identity of new creatures in second peter chapter one second peter chapter one verse three according as his divine power he has given unto us how many things all things according as his divine power he has given unto us it's because of his power because of his purpose he has given unto us all things all things that pertain unto life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of a divine nature. Ye might be partakers of a divine nature. Partakers of a divine nature. You have a divine nature. I said you have a divine nature. You see, it is what you say. You are going to receive. That's what Jesus said, that if, if you will say to this mountain, Get thee out of that place. The Lord, will, the Lord said, you will have what you tell me, what you say. You know, some people, if there is um, anything happening, they say, don't mind me. I'm just a clumsy individual. I'm, I'm so clumsy. And I, that, that's just me. That's just me. That's my second nature. That's not my nature this year. I said that's not my nature this year. You know, sometimes uh, something happens and, you know, a person flares up and is trembling with anger and all that. And then you, you keep quiet, you are looking at her, she feels embarrassed, and then he says, um, excuse me, that, that was just my nature. You don't, know, you don't know enough of me. Anytime something like that happens, that's just me. And I'm saying that is not you. 
I said that is not you. Because this year, that divine nature will be in you in Jesus' name. Say something new about yourself. And don't keep on saying, that's just me, that's just me. And then uh, sometimes, uh, you know, it's like uh, the brother there is, uh, you know, wearing a hat. And he wants to go out. And he said, looking here, and, and the hat is on his head. He said, you know, here and there. And he said, uh, Danny, did you see my hat? And <laughs> Danny said, yes, I saw the hat. And then, I mean, where is it? It's on your head. Oh, that's me. I, I, I always forget. That's me. This year, that's not you. Yeah. I said, that's not you. Yeah. Things will be different in Jesus' name. Yeah. You know, everything, a negative thing happens, it says, that's me. Anything, something, anytime something good happens, it doesn't say, that's me. He does not take credit for something good. He always takes credit for something negative and evil. We turn it around this year. Yeah. Now you have a divine nature, a divine nature, and things are going to be different in Jesus' name, whereby are given unto me exceeding great and precious promises that by these I might be a partaker of the divine nature, having escaped, thank God I escaped. I said, thank God I escaped. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through laws, you will escape in Jesus' name. That's the new identity of a child of God. You have the divine nature. Point number two now. In point number two, the new inheritance in the new covenant. It's like you come into a new relationship with the Lord. And the Lord himself arranged all the new relationship. And then he paid the price to fulfill the condition of the new relationship. And in this new relationship, it's a new covenant. And because of this covenant, there are some privileges attached to that covenant. There are some inheritances if that are involved with that covenant. There are some people, they never look at that side of the new covenant. They only look at the side of, I must be this, I must be this, I must be that. Well, praise the Lord by grace, you will be that. But you need to look at your inheritance too. What do you have in this new covenant? In Ezekiel chapter 11. Ezekiel chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 19. Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 19. Ezekiel 11 19. It says, And I will give them one heart and put a new spirit within you. What do you have? I said, what do you have? It's a new covenant. It's just as a result of the Lord bringing you nearer, bringing you closer. And it says, there's a covenant between you and I. He was the one that initiated that covenant, like covenant between God and Abraham. The covenant between God and Israel, the covenant between God and, and David, the covenant between God and the church and the people of God. He has originated that covenant. And he says in that covenant, I will give them one heart, I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. I claim that. I said, I claim that. I'll take the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give them a heart of flesh. In verse 20, and they shall, and that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them, and they shall be my people and I will be their God. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. Ezekiel 36, verse 26. The new inheritance in the new covenant. New inheritance in the new covenant. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. It says, A new heart, a new heart also will I give unto you. What do you have? I said, What do you have? Uh, you know, uh, we can claim that spiritually, we can claim that physically too. You've, uh, you know, maybe you've gone to the doctor, and the doctor, I've been examined you, and I, I always get tired. If I walk from here to here, I don't know, it's like my breath is, uh, you know, getting out of me. I'm here, my breath has only gone that way. And then it's okay, come for x-ray. And they examine you and all, they say... Did anybody ever tell you you have a hole in the heart? Your heart is weak. And if you're like, you are, maybe you're 47 years of age now, they say that your heart is like you're already 73 years of age. What happened to you? And then you say, okay, I now know my problem. Now I want to give you the solution. I said, I want to give you the solution. He'll give you a new heart in Jesus' name. 
and then you've just had a new baby and the new baby you always crying always crying and then by you know they're always sleeping every time and then you take this baby to the doctors i don't know something is wrong somewhere or they say the child has a weak heart a hole in the heart and this year and this time i pronounce a new heart for that baby now because in the physical it gives us a new heart in the spiritual it gives us a new heart and when we believe it and say so for ourselves for our children it is done in jesus name a new heart also will i give you and a new spirit will i put within you i will take the stony heart out of your flesh and i will give you an heart of flesh that is true spiritually it will also be true physically in jesus name you know, I mean, you'll be having that pain, and then eventually you say, I, I think I, I will endure a little day. It becomes unbearable. And then they say, You go to the doctor, they say, There is stone in the kidney, there is stone in the eye, there's stone somewhere, and all that. And we came here today to remove that stone. That stone will vanish away in Jesus' name. The Lord can do it. He's done it for other people. He will do it for you, do it for me, and do it for us in Jesus' name. And then spiritually, any kind of Estonia, I want to, but I find it difficult. I want to serve the Lord with all my heart, all my soul. I have good intention. I say, oh Lord, I'm going to do this and do this. But and there's this thing that is so heavy and is putting me back. That thing is going to be get, gotten out of your system today in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31. Our inheritance, our inheritance in the new covenant. Jeremiah chapter 31. Something good is coming your way. Jeremiah chapter 31. And we're reading there from verse 31. 31, 31. For it says in Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 31. It says in verse 31. Behold, the days come, says the Lord. The days are here already. That I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant did break, although I was an husband unto them, says the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make for the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. I will put my law in their inward parts. I will put my law in their inward parts. Hey, wait a moment. You know the problem of the children of Israel? The law of God was written on the table of stone. And then the priest will come and read it unto them. And then will take the law on stone, on those uh, tablets of stone, and put it in the ark, in the holy of holies, in the tabernacle. And it was so separated from them. And sometimes they remembered, sometimes they didn't remember. And if they didn't remember, and they broke any of the law, some of them were on the penalty of death. Many of them died. That's why Jesus now came and instead of having all those laws on tables of stone, he says, now he's going to write it upon your heart. And then he's inside you, living inside you, and he's giving you the Holy Ghost, reminding you. See what the Lord has done in the new covenant. He writes the law inside your heart. He gives you the Holy Ghost that reminds you. And what you say, Lord, that's tough for me. That's difficult for me. That's my challenge. I cannot do that by myself. Jesus Christ is on the inside of you. And he's your power. He's your wisdom. He's your strength. And he will help you to fulfill the word of God in Jesus' name. And that's how much better the new covenant is to the old than the old covenant. And he said, I'll put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hands and will be their God and they shall be my people. That's our inheritance in the new covenant. It also says in um, John chapter 12, John chapter 12, the inheritance of the people of God in this new covenant, John chapter 12, and I'm reading from verse 26. John chapter 12, verse 26. It says in verse 26, If any man serve me, who is that any man there? You are God confirm it in Jesus' name. If any man serve me, let him follow me. Where I am, there shall also my servant be. Have you found some religious people? Sometimes they knock on your door. 
and as they knock on your door, you don't know who will say, knock at you. You open the door and then you see their bag. And then they have all these, their literature. And they say, I want to come and talk to you about Armageddon. They say, Armageddon. I talk about heaven. They say, no, you cannot talk about heaven. Armageddon. Armageddon. And then you, then you say, I don't have time for that. It's okay if you don't have time, get this one and read because Armageddon is coming. And then if you are faithful and you read that thing over here in this world, you live here forever and ever in a good place with a class of people who are selling this kind of Armageddon material. Armageddon material, it will not be in my house. I said it will not be in my house. You say, go away with your market and go live. They want to live on this. Look at the street. Look at that road there. That's where they want to live forever. But Jesus said, where I am. I said, where I am. I said, where I am. On that streets of gold in heaven, that's where I'm going to be. I leave their Armageddon for them. I'm going to paradise. I'm going to heaven. I will see the angels. I will see the heavenly father. And when they are sick, crawling on the floor here, I'll be walking on the streets of gold over there in Jesus' name. Any Armageddon candidate over there? No. We reject the Armageddon in Jesus' name. It says in verse 26, where I am, there ye may be, there shall my servant be, and if any man serve me, him will my father honor. The father will honor. That's our inheritance. In, at this new time, this new day, it will be so in Jesus' name. In John chapter 14, John chapter 14, reading from verse 17, John 14, verse 17, even the spirit of truth. We whom the, whom the world cannot receive. It says, because it saith him not, neither knoweth him, but she know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. That's part of our inheritance, the spirit of truth. And the truth of the spirit is our inheritance. It will be in us in Jesus' name. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Reading from verse 12. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Our inheritance, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us, I am delivered, who has delivered us from the power of darkness. The power of darkness will never have any hold upon you again in Jesus' name. He has delivered you from the power of darkness and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now you live in this spiritual eternal kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption. What do you have? What do you have? In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Praise the Lord, we have it. I said, Praise the Lord, I have it. First John, first John, first John, chapter 4, verse 4. First John, chapter 4, verse 4. Inheritance, the inheritance that we have in the new covenant. Chapter 4, verse 4. Ye are God, little children. Praise the Lord, we have God. And I've overcome them. Praise the Lord who overcome them. Because greater. Everybody say greater. greater. Say that again. Greater. greater. Because greater is he that is where is he? In, he? in you than he that is in the world. We have him. He will never leave us. Amen. We'll never leave him too. In Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Our inheritance. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We're looking at here from verse 16 and verse 17. It says, The Spirit Himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. We're joint heirs with Christ. Everything Christ has belongs to you, everything God has belongs to us. Because we're joint heirs of the Lord. Those that's our inheritance and much more in the new covenant. Point number three, the new instruction for new conquerors. The new instruction for new conquerors. I'm more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. Look at that in chapter 8, chapter 8 of Romans. Romans chapter 8 in verse 37. Nay, in all these things. 
in all these things. That same street where you are living, that's where you have the conquest. That's where you have the, the conquest. That's where you have the victory. In all this, in that same office, that's where the victory will come. In that same home, don't leave your home. You're married, don't leave your home. I was having difficulty, a difficulty, all that difficulty is gone. New year and new marriage. New year and new family. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Through him that loved us, you'll be more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Now, the new instruction. We're new conquerors. And conquerors don't think like cowards think. Like the conquered, like they think. We think in a new way and we behave in a new way. And we go the direction, a new direction, because we're now more than conquerors. What are the instructions he has for us? He's telling us in First Corinthians chapter 5. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven that she may be a new lamb. I want you to, you know, take some inventory. Sit down just with yourself. Maybe when you get back home and think about what happened last year that I, I wouldn't want to be repeated in my personal life, in my office, in my professional life, in my academic life. What is it that happened the other time that almost made me to quit my profession or to just give up the progress I wanted to have? And then you say this year, all the old thing is purged away in Jesus' name. I said it's purged away in Jesus' name. And then it says that she may be a new long as ye are on Laban, for Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, malice and wickedness. There will be no malice this year. I said no malice this year. Not even a moment, a minute, a day of, I will not talk to him, she will not talk to me, no, it will not happen this year. This year is a year of love, a year of fellowship, a year of understanding, a year of good relationship in Jesus' name. It says when we purge out now that leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth that has come already in Jesus' name. In Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, the new instruction, new instruction that the Lord has given to this new conquerors in Christ. In uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. It says, uh, why don't you go back to verse 23 and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. A renewal this year. That's the instruction. And it says, and that she put on. Ye put on. I will put on. I said I will put it on. You put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Let's see the instruction now in verse 31. Let all bitterness, every, everybody say all bitterness. You know, the scientists will tell you, the doctors will tell you, when you are beat, you're carrying with bitterness about, you're destroying yourself on the inside. It affects the lining in your intestines. It affects all those the delicate membranes inside there. When there's bitterness, there's anger, there's malice, and then you're saying, if I see him, I'm going to do this. You know, sometimes when somebody really gets very angry, you can be sweating. And when you get really fearful, you can be sweating. It means there's something happening on the inside. You're killing yourself. You're destroying yourself. You know, we say, I will not smoke because smoking kills. Of course, of course, it kills. But anger kills as much as smoking. And all that bitterness kills as much as smoking. You know, sometimes, so somebody goes to the hospital and they say that, you know, I don't know what is happening. There's something always a heating of my brain. There's something always doing this. And then they say, okay, well, stretch out your hand. And then they put the wine something there. And then they are pumping something. You know what I mean? I said, you know what I mean? Don't pretend as if you don't know. Tell me. Yes, you know. And then they take the blood print. They say, watch. See your blood pressure. You are thinking. If they say you have, you say, no, I'm not. No, you are thinking. Uh, it's only, you know, my husband did something and says he did that thing. I've been thinking. Ah, you better forgive him because if you don't forgive him, you are dead. And if you die, you will not die. I said you will not die. You know, 
And sometimes so you say you are in the house and your husband say, darling, darling, say what, darling, say what you did the other time. I'm so bitter. I want to tell you, I will not pretend. I will not pretend. And I'm an angry woman. I'm not an angry man this year. Angry man, are you there? No. Angry woman, are you there? No. Let there be love. All the bitterness that's of the past year, all that is gone in Jesus' name. Because we kill ourselves even physically. And then how can you minister? Let's say for we are preachers. Somebody is a preacher. And then just 30 minutes before coming to the pulpit, you know, he's angry and say, when I come back from the pulpit, you woman, I will deal with you. I'm angry. I'm telling you that this marriage, I don't like this. I don't like this. Or maybe it's the children, you know, you are going to preach your carry Bible. And then you say, children, all right, wait. We'll come back. I give you time. You can do whatever you want now. When I come back on of you, I will beat nonsense out of you. And then, you know, he comes and angry, you know, he's angry up till that gate. And then as he gets to that gate, he says, Oh Lord, I'm going to pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And then he comes. And then over here, he comes and says, Praise the Lord. And the praise the Lord is empty. Praise the Lord. Today, we're going to see revival. And it's only shouting because, you know, over there you lost the victory. But, you know, this year, that will not happen. No bitterness in our midst in Jesus' name. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind. We're going to be kind. Kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. We'll, be, we'll forgive each other in Jesus' name. We're looking at Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 is telling us what we, is commanding us the new instruction for new conquerors. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Amen. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. That's our instruction. That's what we are going to do in Jesus' name. And then in Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, new instructions for new conquerors. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that he present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. Praise the Lord. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that she may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. John, John chapter 13. In John chapter 13, reading from verse 34 and verse 35. John chapter 13, verse 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, or love one another. There will be love in our families. There will be love in our local churches. There will be love in, in the headquarters church and love all over the whole church and ministry in Jesus' name. That she love one another as I have loved you, that she also love one another. By this shall all men know that she are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. And this year will be a year of inheritance, a year of possession a year of joy, a year of happiness, and all the new, new things the Lord has said He will do, He will fulfill them in our lives in Jesus' name. Before we pray, Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21, reading from verse 7. Revelation chapter 21, verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And we overcome day by day, day by day. Live one day at a time. Live one hour at a time. Live the troubles and the challenges and difficulties of tomorrow till tomorrow. But today, today, 
the little challenge we'll face today, we we'll have enough grace. When tomorrow comes, the grace for tomorrow will come. When next week comes, the grace for the following week will come. But live in a day at a time, a moment at a time. Whatever we face today, make sure you settle that just like that and overcome. And it says, see that overcometh shall inherit all things. And day by day, that inheritance will be yours in Jesus' name. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son, he shall be my daughter. Are you there? It has happened already. Let's open our, let's uh, rise up now and open our mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I thank you. It's going to be a new year. Renewed promises for God's peculiar people. This is mine. This is mine. You tell the Lord. You tell the Lord. Is willing to overlook the past and forgive the past and cleanse the past. And is willing that from now on, you'll have the victory every day of your life. You'll have the victory. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Tell the Lord, I believe all these promises are mine. All these promises are yes and amen upon my life. You tell the Lord, it will happen. Remember, you have a new identity, a new name, a new nature, a new personality. Shed off the old personality, that angry personality and that bitter personality and that quarrelsome personality. Shed that off. This is a new year. Let the grace of God be multiplied in your life. Let the joy of the Lord be the strength of your life. There's beauty in a smile. There's beauty in a joyful personality. Bring joy to your home. Bring joy to the fellowship. Bring joy to the brethren. Demonstrate this new identity. You're now a child of God, sons and daughters of God. Demonstrate that. Now are we the sons of God. Now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what, what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Be happy personality, joyful personality, cheerful personality this year. No bitterness, no anger, no wrath, no clamor, no shouting at each other. You're a new creature. You're not a foreigner. You're not a stranger anymore. You're a sage. You're a sage. Tell yourself. Believe it in yourself. The grace of God wants to make a saint out of you. Don't keep on saying, I'm, all, I'm just a sinner. I'm saved, but I'm a sinner. I'm born again, but I'm a sinner. I pity myself. I'm a weak sinner. You keep yourself weak because of what you say to yourself and what you say about yourself to others. The Lord gives you a new identity. Accept it. Believe it. Confess it. Possess it. And you are the temple of the living God. Don't allow Satan to Come mess that temple up for sickness, for affliction, oppression, attack, confinement, weakness. Reject those things. You are the temple of Christ, the temple of God, the temple of the Holy Ghost. God in his might, in his strength, lives on the inside of you. And you are the light of the world around you. The light of the world around you. Light of the world around you. Shine. And don't let anybody put off your light. When you look excited, light comes through your eyes. When you look happy, light comes through your eyes. When you are gloomy, when you are dull, when you allow anger, when you allow bitterness, People can see the light is gone. The joy is gone. The excitement is gone. Don't let that happen this year. 
bring light to your community by your look, by your expression, everywhere you are. Let there be joy. Let there be excitement. Let there be happiness. And be a different personality this year. Be a disciple. Demonstrate the new nature. Demonstrate the new nature. Say, praise the Lord, I am new. Praise the Lord, I am new. Attitude is new. Disposition is new. Language is new. My comportment is new. My conduct is new. Partakers of the divine nature. Partakers of the divine nature. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. Believe it and behave it. Believe it and behave it. You have a new inheritance, a new heart, a new spirit. And the word of God, the law of God is written on the tables of your heart. And the spirit of God dwells in you. You are translated out of the kingdom of darkness. You are no more there. You are translated into the kingdom of his dear son. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater. 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 Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are now an heir of God, a joint heir of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have some possession. You have some inheritance. The instruction is, purge out the old leaven. Purge out the old bitterness. Purge out the old anger. Purge it out. Take it away. You have graduated from all that. This is a new year. A new look. A new disposition. A new peculiar person. Be renewed in your spirit. Renewed in the spirit of your mind. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, abundantly. The words of Christ dwelling, abiding, remaining in you. Let there be love each day at a time. Living each day at a time. Love. Living each day at a time. Two wrongs will not make a right. They are bitter. If I am bitter, two wrongs will not make a right. They are angry. If I strike back with anger, two wrongs will not make a right. They are abusive. If I respond to them, that's the abusive way. Two wrongs will not make a right. Put some gentleness in their harshness. A new life, a new look, a new behavior, a new disposition. A new attitude. And the Lord says he'll do a new thing. He'll do a new thing. That new thing will happen. It will happen. It will happen. For God's peculiar treasure, God's peculiar people. His promises will be yes and amen in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. And the joyful, happy people said, yeah. The renewed, revived people of God said, yeah. It is done in Jesus' name. Let's up your hand for your victory. You've got it already. There's going to be a new year for you. There's going to be a better year for you. All the promises of God will be yes and amen in your life this year. In Jesus' name.
from your heart to your spirit to your mind to your bones to your blood and to your brain and to your walk of your hand everywhere you go everything will turn right everything will turn new this year in jesus name father in the name of jesus we thank you for this and this moment thank you lord for the word of prophecy you've given us this year and for the word for the proclamation you have given us this year that this year is going to be new through and through all through the year in jesus name begin with every one of your children i pray lord every one of us that peculiarity that you are sending to us in our character in our disposition in our lifestyle in our behavior in our conduct oh lord i pray make your people peculiar people in jesus name wash everyone in the blood of the lamb cleanse everyone in the blood of the lamb the transformation that ought to be i pray oh lord you touch every life you transform every life and you give us that peculiarity so that people will know we're no more like them and people will know we're no more like we used to be lift up your people spiritually in jesus name Lord, you pronounce us to be the sons of God. And we pray, Lord, we'll carry ourselves like sons of God. We'll conduct ourselves like sons of God. We will live like sons of God. We will move like sons of God. We will talk like sons of God. We will succeed like sons of God. We will be victorious like sons of God. Now are we the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be. And we know that when we shall see him, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Oh Lord, we pray that day after day day and week after week and month after month this new year you will do that in every life do it in jesus name to say we're the saints of god will act saintly will talk saintly will dress saintly will appear saintly everything will do in the public in the private in the house in the church on the road in the office everywhere that saintliness will come forth through everyone in jesus name and we are the temple of the holy ghost oh lord this temple will be sacred sickness will not defile this temple addiction will not defile this temple demons will not defile this temple any negative thing in your body there your temple there any sickness from the top of your head to the tip of your toe i command right now all the sickness all the infirmity all the plague all the weakness come out in jesus name and lord i pronounce health on the mothers i pronounce health on our wives i pronounce health on our brothers i pronounce health on our fathers i pronounce health on our sons and daughters i pray oh lord everyone here the health coming from the atonement of jesus christ will come upon every one of us be healed in jesus name all those negative reports we got from hospital or from anywhere or the feeling we have in our body i now come in authority over everything and i command that sickness i command that infirmity you cannot receive the word of power coming from the servant of god i command come out in jesus name I pray, Lord, the pain in your back, that back ache, I command it right now. You have no right to be there. Come out in Jesus' name. I command that swelling in your body to come out right now. That in your body, come out right now. I command that vomiting, I command right now, be healed in Jesus' name. I'm asking for that person that has the right ear. It's like you are deaf in the right ear. I command right now, the Lord will touch that right ear. Be healed in Jesus' name. And the eyes that are becoming dim. You're still young, you are not old. It's not old age. Whatever they call it, I command that your eyes will open. And then the clear sight and bright sight for you in Jesus' name. All that arthritis, it will not go through this year. I pray that all the pain, all the pain in your joints, the pain, your knees and pain at the waist, I command all that pain come out in Jesus' name. And there's something crawling in the body over here and then knocking the head and knocking and you're not allowed to sleep in the night i command that all those powers of darkness all those things crawling about i command right now come out in jesus name and not the work of their hand bless the work of their hand i pray that everywhere you go this year as just have your heart in prophetic singing i pray that this year whatsoever you do whatsoever you do whatsoever you do will prosper in jesus name you will succeed you will prosper the lord will lift you up you'll be the head you'll not be the tail in jesus name 
Lord, I present every family before you. No barrenness in our family. We are not going to be spending our money on my child is sick, my child is sick, my child is sick. That sickle cell problem in that family, I command that sickle cell, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that every power of darkness will come down. Every power of evil will come down. And I pray, Lord, that your people this year, they'll climb up. Climb up to the mountain top. And all the good things you have said, the new thing you say will do, new things you said you do. In her one hear new things. All two hear new things. All three hear new things. All four hear new things. All five new things. All six new things. Uh-huh. I come to all seven new things. New things. New things. Do it in Jesus' name. Lord, we we'll remember all our missionaries, all our pastors, all their families, their wives and their children. We we'll remember our full-time workers everywhere from the headquarters, all to everywhere. No negative thing will happen to them this year in Jesus' name. When they go out, protect them. When they come in, protect them. And as they have been blessings to everybody, get sending these messages to everywhere. Oh Lord, multiply all those blessings and bring upon these full-time workers in Jesus' name. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. This day, those things will begin to happen. Extraordinary miracles. Extraordinary signs and wonders. Everywhere you go, victory. Everywhere you speak, victory. Everywhere you write, victory. Anywhere you go, victory in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. I know you have answered. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, yeah. and the 2013 people of God said, yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I wish I could just uh, come to you over there and shake you one by one. Why, why don't I shake you? Stretch out your hand. Shake me. I said, Shake me. The blessings of God transport your life in Jesus' name. Thank you very much and God bless you.